Here we are in our newly planted garden being created. We've got the harvesting method. You can use a bucket or a bowl. We have the water in here. We're going to set it inside under the shade. And you know, a lot of these are really too young to be harvesting, but we're going to show you the method because uh, we're excited around here to have this for the first time in a while. And some of these are just barely big enough to be harvested. Daikon radish greens. These are excellent salad greens and you can harvest the radish root as well. So we go the same approach to all the different plants. The lower branches all the way around and you clip them way down to the base. Sometimes what I do out here is also a little chop and drop permaculture because we don't use all the stems necessarily. Me clipping some of these things just going around. So I wouldn't go in and start picking the inner leaves. I would always get the outer bottom ones first. Well, hello there. Outermost, lower, lowest. Outermost and lowest. When we're harvesting, we see any, it's so plentiful because we know how to garden. We see any of these branches that are already wilted or anything less than completely perfect, it just becomes mulch. So we, that little bit of pruning become, that little bit of harvesting becomes pruning and we just leave it here. But see, it's still helpful to the plant because what a lot of people don't realize is harvesting and or pruning helps it grow. So if you leave plants without harvesting them for a while, they actually grow less. We're leaving some of the little ends of the stem there because for mixed green salad, a lot of times you don't put the stems in, just for cosmetic reasons. But uh, you can use all the stem and this can be used in a marinated salad too, like with, uh, with the actual daikon root or with, with red radish or beet salad grated, grated carrot, and you can chop all these little stem pieces. That's a good use for daikon greens too. And see how like, at first glance, I didn't even see that one there. But that would be the first, even just to leave that there and prune them. You know, you go all the way around. And, yeah. Boom. Oh, look at the Mizuna. Gee, they got the Mizuna Suna. <laughs> So here we have like a young basil plant. Uh, when it gets about a foot taller, I will top it, which will make it branch out a little bit more. Right now, I'm not going to top the whole thing, but what I will do is see, I'll pinch off the very innermost flower. Not the two leaf brackets around it, but just the flower. I'll pinch that off because it'll train it to keep growing our leaves. That's, our, that's really what we're wanting it for us to manufacture a leaf. But what we will do to harvest, we can harvest a little bit of this plant now and actually encourage it to grow wider. We'll take the entire branches down here and actually clip those branches off and we'll just pluck the leaves off of those little mini branches. Boom. Yeah. I didn't know if you just stopped it or started it. Both. <laughs> Ooh, here's some baby arugula, one of my personal cosmic favorites. It's like a facelift and a leaf. Oh, look at this one. Monster daikon. I guess overall it's better to have a larger bucket full of water, and even if you don't need the amount of water, it helps all green Since I didn't bring a bucket out, what I'm doing, I'm just kind of 
turn them over while I'm out here to make sure everything's touching the water. Is it just water or do you have any peroxide? 